Now the mic is working. I'll make it a bit quieter. Okay, I will now introduce the, the next speaker. That's uh, Joris Domans. He uh, from from Ludo Motion. He is both uh, a lecturer and uh, he's building actively finds the time to build games, which is pretty hard. Trust me. Uh, and uh, he will be talking about uh, cyclic dungeon generation, right? Uh, about his uh, in the context of his new game, uh, Unexplored. Is he? The game is currently on uh, in Steam uh, early access, so just like the previous game, <laughs> make sure you buy it. And with this one, you can all we can already get it from Steam. So, yeah, I'll leave the scene for all the yours. So thank you. Uh, the trick of me being a lecturer and building a game is that I don't lecture as much. So it's, uh, <laughs> maybe that helps. Uh, and yes, you can already buy the game. You can do it right now if you want to. But I'm, um, I'm here to talk about um, uh, cyclic dungeon generation, which is uh, an idea that came up uh, while I was working on this game that sort of, for me, revolutionized the way I thought about how to random uh, generate dungeons. But let me uh, talk a little bit about the game first to give you the, the proper context of the techniques uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about. So the game that we're working on is uh, called Unexplored. And Unexplored is a very, in, a, in many ways, a very traditional roguelike, roguelite, uh, how do you want to call it? Uh, it's a dungeon crawling game. Um, uh, a, a little over a year ago I was working on a game that was much more ambitious, using similar techniques, but uh, because it was so far out there we thought, let's step back, let's focus on the techniques first, make sure that we can get the gameplay and the technology work together, and just do that with a game that follows all the tropes that we can think of. So we looked at, at, at NetHack, we looked at Broke, we looked at all the, the, the traditional rogues uh, out there, rogue guys out there, and thought, okay, let's, let's, let's do this. Uh, the only difference is we're doing it real time. So the, um, the game, uh, in, in game it looks something, something like this, it's top down, uh, you run around as a little character, you have swords, you have daggers, all these things. Uh, you go, uh, the premise is very simple, there is, you're in the dungeons of doom, uh, you need to uh, uh, stave off all these uh, other creatures that are going around there, uh, you try to make your way to level 20, uh, where you can find the Amulet of Yendor, uh, and then you have to make your way back up again. Um, so, so far that's, that's, that's very typical roguelike. Um, uh, what's also very typical roguelike is that there's a lot of combat, uh, so you, you, you'll encounter a lot of monsters, uh, but because this is a real-time game that, that draws a lot of inspiration from uh, top-down Zelda games, um, and even though the combat can get quite messy and, and, and uh, there's a lot of uh, effects and magic and things, there's a lot of things that you can uh, have to take into account, a large part of the gameplay uh, doesn't really stem from combat, that's a, that's a major thing in, in the game, but there's also another major th thing and that's exploration. You want to feel you, that you're dungeoneering, uh, you want to explore these levels, and um, there is more lock and key puzzles and lock and key types of mechanisms than you would typically find in a, in a roguelike. Um, and to keep that together, we needed to start g uh, generating levels uh, of a level of sophistic sophistication that's just a little bit different from from what uh, roguelikes are normally doing, because if you look at a game like Rogue, which is, has a very good level generation, by the way, um, it ha it's, it's a good game, but it sidesteps a number of problems. So, uh, for example, it, it's always generating a, a, a path from the entrance to the level to the exit of the level that's unobstructed by any doors or, or, or locked things. There is locks in the game, but they're always, always optional. Whereas in this game, actually, there is locks in, in that actually sort of hinder your progress, that are sort of um, uh, halting what you need to do, and then you need to find a key before you can progress. So um, here's, uh, here's a level that we've been, uh, that's, that's generated by the game, um, and there's going to be a, a couple of others as well. Um, and what we tr started to doing at one point is making these levels uh, follow different types of rules than what you normally see in, in, in roguelikes, uh, in the sense that they're sort of generated in circles. There's always circles that you can go around uh, with. You, we saw uh, in a couple of talks earlier that, that loops make a small level much harder, which is actually a very interesting quality of a, of a level. And we make a lot of use of these things. And we're actually quite happy with the results. So there's a lot of things that the, the, the generator can do. It can uh, generate rooms and cave-like structures. Um, there is uh, different types of terrain that can, you, uh, can work with. There's vegetation. I don't know why, but it, somehow it feels interesting to have trees in the dungeon, even though there's no light, but nobody, nobody complains about that. It's, 
it's, it, it, it makes the game look a little bit more alive, I guess. That's, that's, uh, that's always a good thing. Um, and, and we've been generating a lot of these things, and, and uh, on a, this is not just a, this is these are just picked from a, a, a series of 20 levels I did for all the levels that are, were in a, in a level. Then I picked some of them that were looking more dis distinctive, but there's not a big sample I took these from. So I'm, I'm quite happy with the results. But we started noticing a couple of things, um, and one of these things is that actually, if you if you're generating levels. It's very easy to go overboard in a lot of sense. So it's if you, uh, it's free content, right? So you can, if you if you have a level uh, of size x, you can make it double size x very cheaply. But it's actually, typically, it's not what we end up doing because I found that if the levels are smaller and more consistent, uh, they are much more interesting. So this is, for example, a, a level where you have to fight a dragon, and I really like this level, the layout, because it's it's mostly a lake of lava and and, and a small path around it, and it's actually already very good and, and the gameplay um, uh, saves, saves itself. This, and there is also other weird things that the generator is already doing that, that were surprises to me. And it also has to do with there's a couple of themes in there that get activated and that not, not get activated um, uh, that, were, that were more interesting. For example, this is a level, it's, unfortunately I, I got the screen capture in a debug build, so there's some debug information there as well. Um, that, that sort of blew my mind for the when the first time I saw it because it's, there's, there's this uh, uh, sort of open platforms that you have to uh, run around and there's a big chasm all around which you can fall into. There's this little walkways connecting these things and there's also a lot of teleporters connecting these platforms. It was very interesting and very difficult to play through and I never ever programmed anything like this into the game. It's, it's just a, a happy, happy uh, coincidence of a, of a lot of things that were going on uh, such as the cyclic level generation, but also uh, the selection of different themes that the level generator was working with. In this case, it's you know, uh, the, the, the themes that the, the generator was restricted to. It's, it's basically make everything room-like, so no caves, uh, but have chasms in between, and, and use teleporters as, as one uh, uh, possible way of, of navigating. And then it and came up with this. Um, and um, I'm for one, I'm quite happy with, with the results and the, 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 the game's already in uh, early access so we get a lot of people playing and there's people that actually spend two, three hundred hours in the game already since, and even though it's out there for only a couple of months. Um, so for me that, that means something. It's, it's already uh, shaping up the things that I wanted to do and I think the, the cyclic generation is a very key element of uh, why, that, uh, why, that, why that's the case. Um, one particular uh, response that I'm pretty proud of is um, uh, by a website called Defunct Games. I don't know if you're uh, familiar with that website, but it's, it's, they're very critical about the things they do. They're really happy uh, uh, being very uh, negative about a game if, if the game sort of, uh, 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 if it's justified. They always, they, they find, they're pretty justified in the critique, but they, they're pretty, can be pretty harsh. Uh, and and they, they reviewed an um, early version of the game and one of the things that they said is that, well, if, 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 they, if, if we told them that this, these levels were uh, put together by a programmer, not a designer, but a programmer, they would believe it. And for me, that's already sort of a victory. The, 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 I want these levels to feel different from just any randomly generated thing. I really want them to feel like they were put together with some sort of intelligence. And even, even if a critical game like Defunct Games is getting that, I think we're, we're making, uh, making lots, uh, lots of progress there. Um, so, the um, key element of, of why this is working um, is, is in the cyclic, what, what we call cyclic uh, dungeon generation. And um, uh, what's very important about this is that if you look at the way a lot of uh, uh, dungeon generators work, is that they have a sort of branching structure as, as the core technique of what they're doing. So uh, typically uh, you start somewhere, you have an entry point in a level, you might have a goal, and you, you draw a branch to, uh, towards that goal, or maybe, and then you can branch out from there, uh, put uh, add, add templates for rooms, uh, add it to the structure, and have that structure grow. Um, and then you, you'll end up with something like a tree, and uh, for example, Broke does this exactly, and what, what Broke does is sort of reconnect the branches at random points to make loops as well, because loops are a far more interesting uh, structure. Um, but we came up with the idea was, okay, what if we don't use the, the, a simple path 
as the, the core, um, the core uh, structure of, of uh, the Ardunian generation, but what if we uh, generate cycles from the start? So the thing that we do is, um, if we uh, start somewhere and there's an, as a, as a goal in the dungeon, we actually do not generate one, but two paths. Um, one path leading from the start to the goal, and one that's another that's probably going to be used for, uh, for a way back. Um, and, and that way you can, um, and instead of branching, you start again sort of nesting and uh, adding these, these different uh, cycles on top of the structure. And you, get up with, you, get, uh, you end up with much more interesting structures. Um, and uh, uh, the origins of this idea, uh, you got to love four noise, we've seen them before. Um, uh, they, they, they came to me uh, when I was participating in a workshop in Canada, uh, doing a lot of things about mathematics and games. But we, uh, we did a one day, with a group of very smart people, we did a one day challenge for ourselves sort of a theory jam. Uh, can we make a generator for parks, for interesting uh, 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 parks that you can have a walk through? So we came up, uh, and we did some research, so we, we looked at urban landscaping, theories of urban, urban landscaping and urban planning, and we also looked at the theories of hypertext to, for, for, to understand flow, and this is actually where the cycles came from. And at one point, the, the, the whole idea of cycles sort of clicked. And what we ended up doing to generate these very simple uh, park-like uh, structures is that we, we sort of say, well, let's have a body of water, and then have a path follow the body, uh, a circle around that body of water. And then uh, designate other areas and have paths uh, circle that, those things as well. So you can actually sort of nest all these cycles. And you have actually very easily, without much work, we ended up with a sort of template that for us felt like, okay, this is, this is a very interesting space. I can imagine if, this, if you would add more trees and more stuff, uh, make, it, uh, make, it look, make it more beautiful, you can already have interesting walks in an area like this. Um, so, when, when, when we uh, uh, discovered this, uh, and I got home, uh, I really immediately obviously wanted to, to um, um, build this into my, in the game that I was working on, but I also noticed that there's some, something about these cycles and something about loops that is very, very important that I've that I somehow missed before. That, that, and, and if you don't use those cycles, you're really missing out on something that's somehow quintessential to uh, to game design. And one of the things that, because I ca came home, spent some time with my family, and I have a daughter of three, and I immediately noticed that she, she loves cycles. This is, cycles is the way that young children actually are experiencing the world. So we, we went out uh, uh, on, a, on, a, on a trip, riding a bicycles and having a picnic somewhere, and we were in a field, and there was just one table around the field. And because an open field is not very interesting to my daughter, but if there's something in there, she starts running circles around it. And um, uh, and that's, that's amazing. And also, uh, we visit, we eat a lot of with friends, and we always bring her along, so she, um, uh, and, and she knows all the, 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 the big advantages and the big interesting things about the houses of all our friends. And one friend, he, he, has, he has a house which is very popular with her because you can make figure eight in the, inside that house. So you can run, and then you can, uh, and you can uh, go from the bathroom to the living room, to the kitchen, to the, and, and, and you can keep on, on running that, like that. And, and I started sort of clicking. This is, this is a very important way of experiencing space. This is, this is something that, that, that comes natural to us and that's, that's, that has a very power and that we need to tap into. So I was already working on this uh, uh, level generation thing. So I started looking at uh, hand-drawn uh, dungeon maps. So if you, if you Google Dungeon Dragon maps and, uh, and hand design and, and start looking at them, I, I started noticing these cycles everywhere. If you look at this is this is not something that's generated. It is just so, that uh, this is something that's been designed by hand. And there's all these interesting ways uh, um, that this level comes uh, comes around. And it's not that many cycles. There might be two or three loops in in this level, but they're all in the right places. And it's so important that you have these cycles there. Um, and these uh, uh, you know Dungeon Dragons designers, they always know where to put the, the secret shortcut right in the right place to, make, to complete that cycle so you can have the long way around and the short way around. And that's, that's the sort of power that you need to tap into if you want to make your, uh, the, the levels that you're generating feel, feel this, uh, have the same quality. And then I also started to um, realize something else important, and that is these cycles they sort of represent, uh, they, they, the, the cyclic structure really sort of foregrounds uh, 
the growth of the player. Um, as I told you, uh, uh, Zelda was a big inspiration for our games, and if you look at what uh, Zelda games do, it's, it's always you know, this, this zero to hero story, this, 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 uh, this uh, typical uh, hero, hero story, and uh, Zelda level design is, is, is structured in such a way that you always notice that you're growing, right? You find this very cool item which allows you to unlock new paths, and then you, you go, you cycle back to the place where you before, where you couldn't uh, uh, continue, but you, where you can continue now. So you actually feel and experience that you have become a more powerful character in that world. And cyclic structures really, really enable you to do that sort of thing. The problem is, however, um, that cyclic uh, structures like this, they might not really come natural to the computer. Uh, for me, the advantage was actually that uh, the, the, the technique that I was working with to generate all these dungeons actually uh, made it a lot easier to implement these things. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the implementation here. Um, and uh, the way I uh, generate these dungeons is by using transformational grammars. You might have had these in class before. Uh, it's very, very simply uh, put, you have a, a simple structure such as I have this, uh, uh, I can say, this, 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 these two connected rooms, and then I, if I find this structure, I can replace it with something else, such as uh, one room that has a key and another room that's locked off. Um, and then I can um, re, uh, find that structure and replace it with the other, and then I have a new structure and I can start looking for an, other patterns to replace. Uh, traditionally, this is, obviously, this is done with uh, a text, a text grammar, um, but you can easily do this with uh, tiles, gra uh, graphs, uh, you can do this with uh, 2D shapes, uh, with 3D shapes, uh, a, a, different, a lot of different things. And I was already working with this thing and I developed a tool called Nudoscope, I'm going to show you it in a, in a, in a while, um, to handle these things for, my, uh, for myself. And if you're interested in, in, in getting more background on that, I actually published a paper in 2010, sort of that's a starting point for me in, in, in this direction, which is a, a good starting point for you to start reading if you're interested. Um, but if you, um, if you uh, uh, apply that to dungeon generation, uh, you, can, you can imagine it starts out like this. I have a room, so I'm generating a dungeon. Uh, so I might have a room that's saying, well, a dungeon consists of a number of rooms and, and a goal. Um, and the goal is a dragon, uh, and the amulet of Yendra in this case, and the number of rooms. So if um, uh, I start out with the dungeon and apply these rules, you can imagine there is a, a sequence of rooms with uh, and an entrance at one point, and the enemies, and, and, and that sort of thing. <coughs> and these um, transformational grammars, um, they, uh, they do have some problems associated with them. Uh, I remember um, that, uh, I don't know if you ever heard of Michael Matias, but he's a, he's a big name in con procedural content generation. He's done, done a lot of research in America. And he, he wanted to approach me, he said, how do you control how do you control these grammars? I never got, get, got them to work for me. How do you actually make sure that they don't spin off and create endless, endless large things? Um, and, I, and I explained to him that, well, I, I, I cut a number of uh, corners, uh, and I say, well, I don't let the grammar decide always uh, which rules to apply. I use something like a recipe uh, that sort of, uh, sort, of, sort of specifies, okay, apply these rules, apply them a couple of times, um, and, and that way I can, can control, and this is a very important uh, step to keep these things under control. And also what's very important if you work with this, this technique is not to try to make one big grammar for everything, uh, but instead try to make uh, very specific grammars to do very specific things. We already saw in the presentation by Matthias that they have these three uh, steps in, in the generation. I have actually something very similar, except that I don't have three steps, I have 44 steps. Um, but if you can you can sort of group them in, in, in very very similar similar, st similar steps, and every step has a, sim a, a single purpose grammar associated with it, um, and um, it makes one very simple transformation, and then you end up with a, a new intermediate uh, uh, level design that might look like the, the blocks uh, that Matthias showed, and then and then you end up uh, with something that looks more like the levels that I just showed. And if you don't believe it's 44 steps, I, I think there's 44 um, circles in this, in this uh, image. Uh, and this is actually a screenshot from Nudoscope showing the, the level generator for unexplored. Uh, and every circle is actually one of those steps. It's associated, there's one uh, so, uh, grammar associated with it. 
the, the diamonds, there are actually checks. So I do also what Matthias does. Uh, if sometimes I check if the grammar still follows a couple of rules, and then I either start all over again or just a, step, a, a, a few steps back into the process to uh, and re and regenerate. Uh, this is this is one, one way of controlling the um, uh, the, um, uh, uh, controlling the quality. Uh, so it is uh, very important to see that. These grammars, they're not generative, because that's what the, the mistake that Michael Matthias was making. He was thinking of generative grammars, where you have one starting point and then have the grammar run amok and then come back with something else. No, it's, it's transformative. It's, it's taking one step at a time uh, and, and trying to uh, keep all these things under control uh, in a multi-generative, uh, multi-step uh, uh, multi generation process. Um, and uh, for... Um, to have a sort of look inside and explore it and what is, is in that game, it sort of looks like a, a little bit like this. So there is, um, um, I start out with an, is, an initial graph representing nodes, rooms uh, that are connected. Uh, and then I started putting things in there. So you can say, well, I'm going to populate this room has a key or a monster. Uh, it's connected to this room. Uh, I, I, at one point, translate that into tiles. Um, uh, increase the resolution and add a lot of uh, detail and, pop and, and populate that and the entire thing to create that, that level. However, the, um, the, the, initial, the fact that initially uh, the level design and the level um, structure is represented as a graph, this is, this, this is very powerful for me because actually graphs are very good at representing cycles. Tiles may not be very good at representing cycles, but graphs are. And, um, uh, uh, and because I can use this graph grammar and, and, and use gra graph logic, I can actually uh, handle these cycles much more easily than, than anybody that's, uh, because it's very unusual to use work with graphs like this in, in, in roguelikes, it, it becomes much more powerful. Um, but you have to understand sort of uh, graph grammars. Um, and as I said, graph grammars, they're basically the same thing as, as string grammars are except there's, there's a few more whistles and bells. Uh, but, uh, for example, if you have a, 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 start, a graph representing a start and a goal, it's easy to create a cycle because I can say, well, there's one path leading me one way and another path leading the other way. Uh, and there's other rules that I can specify. Well, if you have a goal that's followed by something on a longer path, um, I actually can uh, lock the goal uh, in, a different, in a new node and put the key uh, uh, in the path uh, a little bit uh, longer, uh, further away, uh, and I can also have a rule that says I'm going to arbitrarily grow a structure by placing another node in between. So you can fairly easily see that generating a structure from a starting goal into something like this is, is something that's, that's fairly easy to do with, um, with graph grammars. Um, and this is what I do a lot, uh, graph grammars applied like this, sometimes has the advantage that there is no topology, so there, there's no fixed place where these need to be. That can be an advantage, it can also be a disadvantage. In, in my case, uh, I, I, I work with a very strict grid and then put places in, inside, um, uh, inside the, the, the nodes, but that's just another type of relation. In, 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 you can think of those uh, as, a, as a connection in the third dimension in this case. Uh, but this is actually a graph uh, from from the that, that 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 that's been generated by the generator in the game, uh, where you have all these nodes, and what a node might be, that might be a room, that might be a tunnel, that might be an open body of water, uh, and there's different connections such as doors, well doors obviously doors and windows is, is spaces you can uh, see through, and there's connections between those keys that you can find that unlock certain places. But um, so I had these techniques, I started uh, putting these two together, and all of a sudden my um, uh, design space uh, exploded because I found that these graphs, they're very, very good at representing some very key um, uh, elements of, of, of level design for dungeon generators. Um, in a slightly more abstract representation, I started to see all these, these patterns. So if I have a cycle, uh, and a cycle typically has a start and a, and a goal, whatever that goal might be, that might be the end of the end, it might be an intermediate goal, such as a key that you need to find, um, I, got, I got started to see uh, different ways of, 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 complete, of, of changing that graph into interesting structures solely based on the, the length of the paths. So, uh, for example, if you have a long cycle with um, 
uh, where the, the path over and the path back, I call them A and B, are both long, uh, you, can, you can replace that structure by some interesting things. So for example, you can actually not say what uh, B is also a, an alternative way of getting to the goal, and because there's now two uh, ways I can, um, I can say, well, one is filled with traps, the other is filled with monsters, or something else. Um, or if they're, they're equally long, what I, uh, what I can do is I can have a path over, you find a locked place where you need to pass on, and then you have a valve, so you can only pass in that direction to find the key, then you have to make your way back uh, to the starting point and make your way back to the, uh, to the lock. Uh, but you're not, not quite sure what the way is. Uh, there is there's different ways of, 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 of doing this. However, if you have um, a cycle where A is long and B, the return path, is very short, there's different patterns that you might want to apply. For example, this would be a very good position to have a secret, uh, a secret shortcut, right? Uh, or something that you open up from the, from the, other, from the other direction. Um, but if you have a secret so shortcut that the player can open up, you can reward players for exploring a little bit better uh, and having the, having the shortcut, the thing. The, uh, the one on the right I also uh, like very, very much. It's what I, I like to call a dramatic cycle. Uh, uh, it's where you sort of, it's, it's not a complete cycle, but you sort of show the player in the beginning where the goal is, uh, and then have the player sort of try to f find his way or her way, way around the level and make, uh, make its way there. And you can actually reveal a lot of things. So you can say, well, at the goal there's going to be a dragon, uh, and then you have a lot of anticipation on the part of the player of what to expect and, and, and what sort of tools um, uh, they, they might find. You can also do a very simple um, high risk, high reward structure. So I have a short path, but it is more dangerous than the long path. So which, which path are you going to choose? Um, there's the other, uh, the other uh, um, instance where you have a short uh, uh, path over and a long return. And there's also interesting things you can do. For example, uh, I like the one on the top right, where you have a, a goal and you easily, so you set out to find the key, and you immediately find the key, but the way uh, you just got uh, 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 used to get to the key actually sort of collapsed behind you, and now you're sort of stuck in the dungeon and you don't know how to get back, which is a, it's a, it's a, powerful, uh, it's a powerful structure. Um, there's also other things you can do. So, for example, you can have the player find the key very quickly, but then try to learn deeper into the level and get him, uh, get him or her into more trouble than, than she signed up for. So there's a lot of things. Uh, there's also, you can also have, uh, if the cycle is very short and, and to begin with, there is other things you can do. Uh, for example, I like the idea of um, uh, absorbing monsters. So there's a, a small cycle of con in interconnected rooms and you can have a dangerous monster just going circles in that room and it already creates an interesting challenge in, it, in, in itself. Um, there is also, you can have a reward visible at, uh, that's very quickly to find, but there's a danger there as well. So, there's a, so you can sort of lure the player into a gambit. Um, one thing that I do in the game is actually so show the player a room and then if they go into the room, uh, close the door behind them and sort of make them feel stuck and then have, have random teleportation scrolls or uh, scrolls of descent to actually sort of escape the room. This is also an escape generated, but it's, it's not the escape that they want to have. Um, and this is, this is, um, um, uh, this is just a, a small subset of the things that I actually am using already. It's, and, it's, and all these, these patterns that I came up with, it took me yeah, about a day or something, not even a day to, to come up with these patterns. It's, easy, it's so very easy to come up with the patterns. It's, it's, uh, it's long, much longer time to implement them. But it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, for me, it's a testimony to the, uh, to the, power, of, the power of these cycles to express actually these, these, these things that we know about level design. Um, here's an, um, uh, sort of an advanced cycle uh, that I, uh, uh, I like to use in the game that really makes the, the game more Zelda-esque, more Zelda-esque, um, and that's uh, a sort of um, uh, key item cycle. So in the, in the game, like in Zelda, you can find these powerful weapons, things that also function as a, as a key. So if, for example, there's a horn of blasting that you can use in many ways, but it, it also opens up pathways. Um, and one way I use that is that you have your, your level five, and there is a, uh, as a, as a pathway that needs to be opened by the, the horn of blasting, and that will lead to set level seven eventually. But you can also make your way to, into level six, where you can find the, the, uh, this particular uh, uh, horn. And level six might actually have this, this underlying structure with another 
uh, with an, uh, a few other cycles attached to it, but not that many. And which is a key item cycle where you sort of start when you, and you, and you come across these locks that are themed, so they, they're openable by the horn of blasting. And at one point you sort of you, you pass a valve, you enter a room where you have the key item, and the only way out is actually u using it. So yes, you have a sort of mini tutorial in there. Uh, and if it was truly Zelda-esque, the, the mid-level mini boss would be there as well, uh, or you would meet the mid-level mini boss just before actually uh, getting the key item. And then you, and then you uh, uh, can actually make your way back, back up, or another way to progress. Um, and it, this is this is this is following the level design of, uh, of of Zelda, and it actually allows me to generate these structures, and that's and that's really really important. Um, now we're doing time wise. Oh, can see time. So um, I'm going to take a little time to show you actually the telescope itself. So you can sort of see what the, the what's in there, because uh, everybody was showing tools. Isn't it? That's everybody showing their tools. I'm going to show my tools. Um, um, so this is this is just uh, this is a part of the of the of the generator. Uh, and if I uh, uh, execute it, it's it's starting to generate the level. It's, it's, so it's it's making its way, doing all the uh, all the green uh, dots are now executed, and it's working on, on a particular thing. And you can see there is branching out. So sometimes. Things, uh, things get, go back to uh, branch out and then branch back together, and there's a couple of checks in there. But the, the starting point, uh, I was looking at the screen, but it's, it's completely finished, but that's because it's a, an image. Um, uh, but the starting point is, as I said, it's already, it's very simple, it's, it's a, a, a fixed size, actually it's, it's depending on the level of the dungeon, it, grow, it starts with four, three by four and it ends up with being five by five or something. Not too big because actually much bigger dungeons are not not, not necessarily more fun. Um, but it's just an empty graph with nodes. And then the first thing it does, it's running on my uh, Surface tablet, so it's a little bit slow. Um, uh, first thing it does, it's actually saying, well, I'm going to put in one main cycle. Um, uh, and in this case. Uh, I'm not quite sure what it, what it, sh it shows, but there is already it says uh, there's an entrance entrance point here, there's a goal here, and you can see there's a, there's a path leading to the to the goal, and there's an, uh, a, a, cup, uh, a couple of keys and locks in here. So, for example, it says uh, there's a key here that allows you to continue on this side of the path, then then you, then you find the key to actually unlock the goal. So it's a it's a double key uh, cycle. Um, <laughs> it's a bit confusing because I can't look at the on the screen, um, and then you can add, add some extra cycles in there. I'm not quite sure what it, what it did in this case. Uh, so, some, for example, it added a cycle on, on, on top here, actually showing you a bonus uh, bonus reward in a, in a different room. So it's not a complete cycle you can follow, but it's a sort of a look ahead into what might might come up. Um, uh, and it, uh, it made a patrol cycle here. So this this part of the level, it put an enemy that's actually patrolling this this area of the of uh, of, of the level. Um, and so it's 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 and one one important thing is that um, uh, at this stage I'm just using very generic uh, uh, labels for everything. So uh, I'm talking about locks and keys, but w uh, what they might be in the game is 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 uh, it can be something completely different, and it's going to be determined at a later step. A lock and a key might be. Uh, literally a lock and a key. It might be a lever and a door, which is it's, it's almost literally a lock and a key. But it might also be something like you find this potion of fire resistance, and the the, the door, the, the key, the lock that you need to unlock, uh, need to get past, is is something that that causes a lot of fire damage. Uh, it might actually be so. It might not be as binary as as, as you think. And actually, it, uh, the game tries very hard. Uh, the generator tries very hard to make this lock and keys as varied as possible based within the themes that it is allowed to have. Uh, valves, for example, can also be different things. So a valve can be a one-way teleporter, but it can also be a door that, that, that can be only open from one, one side to another. Um, uh, there we go. Uh, so, uh, and it starts to specifying more things, so it's putting uh, enemies in there. Uh, it actually uh, expanded the, the structure a little bit because it, it ran out of space and it needed to add one more room. It couldn't couldn't play it otherwise. Um, so, and at one point, this is the most uh, detailed graph uh, the generator is producing. Uh, the, the, the the layout is is is, is 
uh, wrong doesn't really matter at this point. Uh, and the game actually uh, knows about this graph. So, so the, the game is, is told about these things. So it knows about all the relationships about, of, of the items and it can tell if, if an item that is being destroyed is actually a key item that, that, needs, to be, um, uh, that needs to be found for, by the player to actually progress. I'm going to, back to, I'm going to get back to it in a second. And then what it does, it's, it's, it's converting this to tiles. So it's saying, well, the structure is, is uh, going to make that into tiles. I'm going to uh, uh, enlarge the, um, the structure and put, so there's a number of doors that are actually barriers. That there might be water or lava, a bit bridges across them. There's rooms. It's already de uh, decided there's going to be some, some extra lava here to, uh, uh, to make it more interesting. Um, it's going to add some set pieces to it, so uh, 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 a little set piece for the entrance and, and that sort of thing. Uh, and then it does something interesting as well. For example, here I just use a very simple noise generator to, cre to create these, um, these sort of uh, uh, paths for uh, places where uh, uh, chasms and, 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 and trees might grow. So the purple is, is chasms, the green is, uh, is uh, vegetation. And I simply superimpose that on top of the train uh, well, there's a lot of, a lot of trees here that never grow because there was no space, but you can see some other places and you see the chasms there. And it's, it's a simple uh, uh, superimposition uh, of, of these things with some, some rules. And then it, and, and at one point you end up with a fully decorated thing and it, it's, it's putting in uh, patrol points, it's putting in um, places where a noise is uh, noise generators. Uh, in this case I'm, uh, I'm experimenting with wind as well that comes, uh, comes up from the, the chasms which is uh, a feature that's not yet in the game, but will be soon. Um, so it, 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 it's generating all these things uh, uh, inside this wonderful tool I, I've been working on. Um, however, if you do content generation like this, you end up with a lot of problems because, um, as I said, a lot of roguelikes are sidestepping a number of problems and challenges by not having uh, very critical, not very having hard locks. Uh, uh, I have problems uh, with a lot of things. Uh, I'm in early access right now. People are reporting things back, such as and sometimes they're easy to solve, right? So uh, and that's quite, it's not very clear to see, but uh, when there's two columns that are spawned in, in such a way that, that actually the player cannot progress, and it's actually uh, a, a bug in the, in, the, in the generator, it's easily easily amended because it's a very simple pattern, don't spawn a, a column between two walls, right? So that's, that's easy, to, um, uh, easy to fix. Um, but, there is, uh, but there is different, um, uh, and, and same goes for a, a, tur a turret that's blocking a, a doorway. Uh, there's weird things such as uh, windows that, that are going nowhere, um, or uh, sometimes you know, the, the player is spawned outside the level. And sometimes you have to be very pragmatic about, okay, what, uh, how do you solve these, so for example, uh, if the player is ever outside the level, I'm just going to teleport them back to the to the uh, to the uh, to the uh, to the stairs uh, because it's, I don't know what went wrong. I don't care what went wrong, but I want that the player uh, um, actually can continue, and that's e that's very easy to do. Sometimes uh, some some things I haven't solved, so this is a level that consists almost only of doors. I don't know what happened. Uh, <laughs> I suspect something in the memory management of the the player that uh, that reported this thing. Um, uh, um, yeah, that, 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 that was an issue there. Um, and sometimes things uh, are a little bit uh, more, uh, more damaging. For example, uh, here you can see a lever being spawned in a place that the player could not reach, and this poor player spent two hours trying to solve this puzzle, um, which obviously uh, it was no, no puzzle. Um, <laughs> it was just a bug. <laughs> And, um, and the play, players can get stuck uh, with this. And uh, try as I might, it, I, I find uh, it, it's almost impossible to get weed out all these weird edge, edge cases, all these weird things that might go wrong. Sometimes you know, it's, it's, it's a problem of the generator. Sometimes it's players doing weird things I never foresaw, uh, foresaw, and they get stuck in places. And you can blame themselves, and often they do, but yeah, they're not, 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 uh, not wrong actually also blaming the game that, for allowing them to get in this place in the first place and, uh, and not allowing them a way out. So um, I need a, a solution for this. And the solution, just improve the generator until all these, these problems are gone, is, is, is not, never going to work. Especially because I'm, just, I'm the only guy working on this and that's ne never going to happen. It's, it's just too much work uh, if it's, if it's going to be possible at all. But luckily, um, 
uh, Dirk de Geus is, uh, uh, is the owner of uh, Paladin Studios. Uh, we, we talked about this in, in, in a different setting, and he uh, and I uh, sort of started thinking, and uh, he sort of started thinking, okay, so if I d detect something going wrong, I can sort of make uh, uh, the, the the game sort of. Uh, uh, have this Deus Ex Machina function where the game steps in and say, well, I'm sorry you're stuck. Um, here you have a, a scroll that will allow you to escape, or you have, you, you have the key that you need, or uh, I'm going to open this door for you. Um, uh, and that, uh, and that, and, 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 so I wanted to do something like that, just det detect on the fly if the player ever is going to be in a, in a, in a state that's, that's, uh, that's impossible to reach. And then, uh, but uh, Derek, Derek said to me, well, if you're going to do that, just be very blatant about it. And make that into a mechanic, and I, and I did. So now there's a, a button on the on the top right that says "Pray for help." Um, so every every time that the player feels that they're stuck, or any any time they want to actually, they can click that button, pray for help, and most of the time nothing happens because then the gods are fickle in this in this game and they don't always answer answer. But what I actually do when people are pressing that button is sort of uh, I have this graph notation of of the of the level at the same time. So I'm doing a check at the, at, in the background, uh, saying, okay, the player is, um, uh, he's in the middle, right, so it's uh, the, the yellow dot saying player uh, next to the entrance, and all the white nodes are actually places that are the, the game knows about that the player can reach at this moment, but the red things, he can't reach right now. And there's no way the game actually foresees that the, 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 the player can reach this thing, and that's probably because it's a bug. Um, and uh, because I don't want to run this test all the time, uh, the pray for help button was actually a very good solution. I run this test every time a player enters a level, so you can uh, sort of see, okay, there's parts of the level that uh, a player can never reach, and you can, you can fix this and uh, be blatant about it or not, whatever you want. Uh, um, but uh, I don't want to, to run this test all the time, every time the player does something or every time the do doors. So why not put in a button and every time the player thinks they need help, they can uh, at least the game can tr sort of uh, try and, and find a solution. And I think... For me, this, is, uh, this was an important step because trying to do level generation in the way I'm trying to do it, you, you, never, you, you never get to sidestep this bullet in, a, in any other way, right? So, and if I'm not going to sidestep it, then I may, may, might want to sort of incorporate it, just take the hit um, and, and, and try to turn it into something, something else, and into a new wonderful mechanic. And that sort of, uh, sort of worked for me. So that's about it. We have some time for questions. Um, so if you have questions, let me know. Any questions? Uh, I'm adding more interesting features as well. There's, uh, there's a couple of things. I want to add more mystery to the game. Uh, right now I'm uh, so I need, I need early access for a project like this because I can go through all the levels myself and there's all these things that people are finding that they never thought of. Uh, also the feedback has is, 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 is been very good. Uh, and I like the, to have this, this environment where I can test, okay, uh, um, and now, for example, uh, there's one feature that I want to do is to have parallel floors so that there's two alternative way down, ways down. Uh, and I can foresee a lot of things that can go wrong with that. And as long as I'm in early access, I can get away with it. Uh, so, um, uh, but it's, I hope to be in early access for a couple more months and then, then actually be done with it and then actually continue to the next step because I want to use these techniques for a more ambitious game, uh, for something uh, that's, uh, that's, that's actually more adventurous than just hacking slashing your way through a dungeon, but I needed to prove that actually I can control these techniques first. Well, uh, there is, uh, I'm not the only uh, uh, party in this. There's somebody else here from the uh, uh, Amsterdam University of Applied Sciences who is uh, also partly on. But I think we can open up this. I'm, I'm pre it's pretty safe to say that, that um, uh, we'll make this available in, in some form, especially if, if you're interested in, in, in pushing, uh, pushing, uh, pushing games and, and, and doing some research around it as well. Yeah. yeah you mentioned earlier the, the recipe. Right. Right, um, I'll go back to the slide for you. It's a long way back. There it is. Uh, so if you have a grammar, as it is on the left, right, so you can start with a dungeon and then you have rooms. 
and rooms is going to be replaced by rooms plus another room, or, t uh, uh, or rooms by an, uh, a room and an en enemy, or entrance, right? So there's, um, right now, if you just roll the dice, whichever rule you're going to apply, there's no way you can tell up whether you're going to end up with two rooms, three rooms, four rooms, five rooms, or a million rooms. It's all possible. It's, it's, it's um, ending up with a million rooms is a very, very small chance. Yeah, just keep it going. yeah but, it, but it can keep on going. Um, and you don't want that in many cases because that's a, that's a, there's a lot of problems. There's different ways of designing around that. You can make a grammar, designing grammar to sort of terminate automatically on, uh, and, and, and sort of avoid these things, but it's actually very hard. Um, so what I did is, is create a recipe like this and saying, well, I'm not going to apply any rule that I can uh, at any moment. No, I'm going to do this in a very fixed sense. So I'm going to say, well, the, I'm going to start with a start, uh, uh, start symbol, which is dungeon. Then I'm going to rule, iterate the rule start, which is the topmost rule. Then I'm going to iterate the rule goal. There were no other options in this case, but still. And then I'm going to say I'm going to execute rule uh, grow, which can be any of the two rules grow uh, uh, for 3D2 times and 3D2 is if you ever play Dungeons and Dragons, you immediately know what that means. That means just uh, any random number between 3 and 6. Um, so um, uh, that, that allows me to make sure that there is anywhere between 3 and 6 uh, rooms in this dungeon, and then there is an entrance. And then the rule uh, uh, enemies, so uh, how many enemies are actually, I don't know at this point how many enemies are in the dungeon still. I might have might made a more sophisticated uh, recipe for the, for this, so uh, I say well for every enemy I'm going to execute a rule enemy, so that I might show that every enemy is set to something more specific than just generic enemy. Do you also generate the recipe? Sometimes I do, yeah, and that's actually uh, for a previous game that we did. Uh, uh, that was actually very interesting to do because it uh, had a sort of a mixture of things in there, and the recipes would actually be generated in that game, and that was actually a very powerful tool. That's something that you can do. In the back there. How do you deal with increasing difficulties and? Right. Right. The 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 thing is that um, uh, one thing I didn't show you um, is that uh, this generator, this huge thing, is generating one floor. Um, uh, but the, the the game consists of uh, 20 floors, right? And before it's actually starting to generate any floor, it makes a plan for the entire dungeon, saying, well, on level uh, two, you're going to find a bow and arrow. Which means on level three, there might be interesting test for you if you get, want to get some bonus rewards using the bow and arrow, uh, but not on level 20 anymore because it's too long gone. Or you might repeat that structure. Uh, you might, uh, and, and, and that way I can sort of control the progression through, through the dungeon. But it's also actually another step before this, which it's not, it's not as uh, uh, big as this one. It's, it's, I think it's about 15 grammars or something that, that sort of generates the plan. Uh, and it does, it does interesting things. So it says, okay, if I'm going to have uh, a fire dragon at level 20, then I want to have the player to be able to find something that's going to protect him or her from fire at level 18. But that thing might be protected by another boss, uh, which might be themed uh, in a, uh, uh, differently. That might be a... Uh, I don't know, an earth boss uh, that does a lot of stunning damage or whatever, and then I want to spawn something on level 15 uh, that might help the player against that, that sort of thing. So th that's what actually the way the whole dungeon is planned and paced, and, and there's weird things that it does. So if one thing I find, if you control the difficulty too tightly, it, it's, get, get, it's getting a little boring, but sometimes now there is, you know, sometimes you, uh, the dungeon can say, well, level 7 is called the gauntlet, and it's going to be ridiculously difficult, and you just have to run through. <laughs> just forget about trying to find everything that's in, on, on this floor. Just get the hell out of here and, 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 and be on your way. That sort of thing. Yeah. Sorry, I missed it, because, uh, but it's, it's, can you repeat the question? Yeah. No, you actually have to make, uh, uh, this, is, this is something that's, actually uh, complicating my generation uh, uh, by a lot. Uh, I don't know why I, I, I set this goal for myself, but it's, but it's actually something new. So every puzzle, you can go all the way down, and you have to be able to go up. So if you miss the key somewhere and for a critical thing because you fell down a chasm to the level below, the, the, the level has to be generated in such a way that the, other, the key is going to be actually also available on the other side. 
um, uh, so you actually have to make your way up. And this also makes this, for example, uh, one of the structures I show you, so uh, you start at a level and you find the, ex uh, the entrance of the, the, the staircase down very quickly, but the, the way the bridge that you cross to get there is destroyed. Uh, uh, and if you, um, so when you have to go uh, back up again, you have to find the, the long way around. And one spoiler alert, if, you, if you're on your way up, you'll be chased. Uh, this is not something that you know when you started the first time, but there's one, there's a big uh, guardian of Yendo that's actually going to chase you out of the dungeon. Some people actually try to defeat it. Some <laughs> a very rare breed manages to do so, but it's, um, it's sort of a thing you, you're supposed to be chased out of the dungeon, which puts a lot of tension towards uh, the, this thing. And then the reversibility of the levels is also a very important feature in, in how people actually strategize in the game. So, but that's a, that's a, that's a completely different discussion. So I understood that was the last question, so thank you all, and I will be here very shortly after, but I have to run home very quickly after. So, see you. Thanks.